Hey guys, Mr. Cannon. So I just wanted to uh, give you guys a quick, hopefully quick, guided practice video on PED and PES calculation while I'm out on mini paternity leave. So getting started. Uh, first, if we're going to be calculating PED, uh, I did decide that we are going to be using the midpoint formula. A um, couple of reasons for that, but the bottom line is it's more in line with what economists would be using. And especially if you go into econ and college, this is what you'll see. Um, Reminder that when we're calculating PED, it's price elasticity of demand. And what we're looking at is the responsiveness of consumer behavior, so the quantity that they, that they demand, as a price fluctuates. So if the price moves a little bit and there's a big change in um, quantity demanded, then it is uh, extremely elastic. Whereas if there's a small price change and um, there's no consumer change, then it would be inelastic because they would typically buy uh, the same amount or similar. Uh, the determinants are all in other videos, so I'm not going to go over that again. So let's just go into uh, PED calculations. A uh, couple reminders that <clears throat> um, <clears throat> excuse me, I had to cough. A couple reminders that PED and PES use absolute value, so I'm not really going to talk negatives throughout the entirety of this video. Um, you should be using negatives as you're doing the math, but it really doesn't matter. So as long as you come up with the same value, it's okay, because absolute value is uh, our main concern. We are going to be using midpoint formula. And reminder that the formula is going to be looking at the percentage change in quantity demanded over the percentage change in price. So the change between the new and the old quantity demanded versus the uh, percentage change of the new and the old price. Uh, a final point, just because it is something that might come up in y'all's future is that uh, and i tried to kind of shield you from this information as long as possible the elasticity along a line as you'll see down here does change it's not something you should be super concerned with right now but if you are looking to take econ at the college level or move on from there be aware that elasticity is a little more complicated than just flat and straight up I don't want you to worry about it, but if you are one of those people who's gonna be moving on, um, just be aware that it is a little more complicated than that, but we won't be getting into that and that's okay. Uh, okay, so let's look at our first example here. So we are looking at calculating the PED of, uh, of this example here. So we first have to find the percentage change in the quantity. So the formula is up here. So we're doing gonna, gonna do Q2 minus Q1. So down here, we've got Q2. So this is our new quantity. So we're gonna go eight minus our first quantity, which is four. And that is on our top. And then we're gonna divide that by the average or the midpoint, the middle point, right, between the two. So we've got eight and four. And then the midpoint here, the midpoint between eight and four would obviously be six. And that is what's going to give us our percentage change in quantity demanded. Now I picked some really easy uh, numbers here. So you've got eight and four, and obviously it's four between, so you've got a, an average of six uh, between the two. Uh, but if you do need to calculate that, you've got your second quantity demanded, your first quantity demanded, and then you divide by two. So in this case, just for the sake of argument, not saying I have to do this, just for the sake of argument, you would take eight, plus four, so you've got both of these. That gives us 12 divided by two. That gives us the midpoint of six, and that's why six is on the uh, denominator of this, uh, this part of the equation. Now, below, I need to find percentage change in price, and so we have our new price, which is three, minus our old price, which is eight, over the midpoint, so we've got if I wanted to figure it out, the midpoint between that, it would be three plus eight divided by two, and that would give me 5.5. So I already know that. So I've got my average of 5.5, okay? So this is what. Okay, so now we just work through this. So I'll use calculator up here so you guys can see. So I have my eight minus four, that gives me four, obviously. And then four divided by six gives me 0 0.6666667. So I'm just gonna round up uh, that up to the second point. So that gives me a 0 0.67 on top. That is my percentage change in quantity demanded. Now down below, I have three minus eight, three minus eight. That gives me negative five. You can put negative five. It doesn't 
really matter because we're going to go absolute value in a second anyway. Uh, but we have negative 5 and then divided by the average or the midpoint between the two, which is 5.5. That gives me negative 0.9, and I believe it was 0, uh, 0.91 if we really wanted to get crazy about it. Okay, so what we're saying is there is a 91% change in price. And that results in a 0.67 or a 67% change in quantity demanded. Now, to figure out our actual PED figure, we just divide these two. So I've got 0.67 divided by technically negative, but 0.91. And that gives me 0.74 if I'm going to average that out. So 0.74. 0.74. Four, if I'm going to uh, round up to the second figure. Now I'm going to take that down here. 0.74 PED equals. Okay. Now if we're looking down here at the interpretation, uh, I'm looking at any PED that is above one is going to be an elastic demand. Any PED that is below one is going to be an inelastic demand. So this to me is going to be an inelastic demand uh, or a demand that is not very responsive to a price change. And so that's how we figured that out, okay? Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you guys another one here. I'm going to recommend that you pause the video, try and work through this, and then watch it. So I'm going to give you the pause here and we're gonna jump cut right to the left. Okay, so we've got our quantity demanded changes from 40 to 30 and our price changes from 20 to 25. So if I'm looking at this, we need to start with our new quantity minus our old quantity because we are doing the percentage change in quantity demanded above our percentage change in price. So we've got our new quantity of 30 and we're going to subtract that by our old quantity demand of 40 over our midpoint. So our midpoint is going to be the middle between 30 and 40, which is 35. And if, again, if you needed to do that, 30 plus 40 divided by two, it gives you the average between the two, and in econ, we just call that midpoint. Um, and then we've got our new price, so we've got 25 minus our old price, which is 20. And again, move cat, <laughs> and again, we have our midpoint between the two, which is going to be 22.5. So we have our top, which is our quantity demanded change, and our bottom, which is our price change. <laughs> so up top, it's 40 here, not a 46. So up top, we have 30 minus 40, which is negative 10, over 35, which is our midpoint between the two. On the bottom, we have 25 minus 20, which is, whoops. We have 25 minus 20, which is 5, over 22.5. So we're going to get the calculator out for this one. So we've got negative 10, and I'm just going to do a base 10 because <clears throat> negatives do not matter for this. 10 divided by 35, which is going to give me 0.29, which really means 29% quantity demand change over 5 divided by 22.5, which is going to give me 0.22 feet, which means that price is changing 22%. Uh, between the two points I'm looking at. So we do 29%, 9 divided by 22%. That gives us 0 0.01 equals 0 0.01. That's that. That's 0.29 divided by 0.22. I lost the decimal there. 0.29 divided by 0.22. That gives us 1.32 which is the correct answer, 1.32. So we have an elasticity of demand for 1.32 for this, uh, these two points along this demand curve. So we take that down here, 1.32. 1.32 is not between zero and one. It is between one and infinity. So that would give us an elastic demand or a demand that is uh, an item whose quantity demanded is fairly responsive to a price change. So that would be a good, like a luxury or a very specific good, any of the goods with the determinants that we've talked about. Okay, so wrapping up the second half here, calculating price elasticity of supply. Again, it's the exact same thing. It is the responsiveness of a producer's quantity supplied um, 
to a small or major price change. So if you are, uh, and one thing I do want to add, because I didn't say this to every class, in terms of determinants, it is likely that most things that are manufactured have a high elasticity of supply. So if you can just turn a machine on and turn a machine off to make more or less, then it's likely to have a high elasticity of supply. Whereas if it's something that's more natural or a primary good, we're talking anything you mine, grow, anything like that, it's likely to have a high inelasticity of supply. So uh, something that's not very responsive. But if we're using numbers, it's the exact same formula, only using uh, change in quantity supplied rather than demand. <laughs> So we've still got down here, we've still got uh, quantity two minus quantity one over the midpoint or the average of the two. And then that is over price two minus P1, uh, which again is over the midpoint of those two prices or the average. <clears throat> uh, we are still using midpoint between the two uh, and so let's just move on. Okay, so if I'm looking at here, I'm looking at my quantity supplied is 5,000, my new one. And so it is, up here, remember your formula, which you should have in your notes, by the way, but if you do need it, uh, FYI, uh, we're doing Q2 over Q1. So my second quantity is 5,000. And I'm subtracting my initial quantity of 4,000 over the midpoint, which would be the midpoint between 4,000 and 5,000, which is 4,500. And then the same thing with my price. I'm gonna try and find the percentage change. So I have 20 is my new price, subtracting my old price of 10. And I'm doing that over the midpoint, which obviously is 15. So uh, I'm gonna to have to calculate this part. So 5,000 minus 4,000, I can pretty safely say is 1,000. And we are going to divide 1,000 by, or the difference between the two, by the midpoint. So 1,000 divided by the midpoint, which is 4,500 which gives us 0.22 once again, point dose phi. Okay, and if we are doing this bottom one or the change in price, that is a change in price of 20 minus 10. So again, I can safely say that is 10 divided by the midpoint, which is 15, will give us 0 0.67, 0 0.67. So what this really says, is that at a price change of 67% down here, you saw a quantity supply change of 22%. Now, if I was a betting person, I would say that if there's a 67% change in price and only a 22% change in quantity supply, what it likely means is that supply is not very responsive because it's not even responding at a one-to-one. -one. It's not even twice as much, twice as much. Um, it's responding far, later, uh, far less or lower. So let's just see what that means just in case. So we're going to take 22% change or 0.22 in quantity supplied. We're going to divide that by point. What accent was that? We're going to divide that by 0.67. And that's going to get us 0 0.33. 0 0.33. Now, if we want to interpret that, let's go down here. We have a PES is 0.33. So if I'm looking through here, let's do, yeah, red. Okay, so our PES is between zero and one. And what that tells me is that it has an inelastic supply, which makes sense because when you think about this, it says that the price changed 67% and yet I only saw a 22% increase in what was made. So it's likely that it is something that is more primary good, something that takes longer to make, something that you have to farm, uh, something that um, uh, it takes time to produce. And you can't just turn a machine on and make more of it. It's not bread. You can't just turn the bread machine on. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give you guys one self-check here. So what I would do is, again, I'm going to start. I don't know how to use this. Apparently, I'm just gonna, <laughs> that's just going to be there. Um, there we go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this in a second. What I, again, recommend you do is I recommend you pause, work through it, and then watch me go through it to make sure you've hit that. So we're going to pause and we're going to jump cut here. Okay, so I'm looking at uh, the PES and we are looking for the change in quantity supplied over the change in price. So we've got our nice big division line there. So quantity supplied is going to be the new one is 210. So we're going to do 210 minus the old quantity supplied of 84. And I know that off the top of my head and I definitely don't have to check my notes. And that's what makes this so good. 
And off the top of my head, I can tell you the average between those two is 147. How I did find that out is I pulled the calculator out and I said 210 plus 84. So I found the two combined. And then I got the average between or the midpoint. And that gave me 147, which was very convenient. Now down here, we have the new price of 125 minus the old price of 75 over the midpoint, which is pretty obviously 100. And again, if you needed to figure that out, you would do both of them added together, 125 plus 75, which is 200, divided by 2, which obviously gets you 100. Okay. So if I'm doing, leave this up, if I'm doing this top half first, so I'm going to do green, I'm going to do that top half first, calculator up, what I'll see is that we do the 210 minus 84, 210 minus 84 equals 126. And I'll now do the 126 divided by, I'll do this so you can see, 126 divided by 147. And then down here at the bottom, we'll do this sec part second. I'm going to do 125 minus 75, 125 minus 75, which gives us 50, divided by 100, which is below. So it's going to be 50 divided by 100. And then our major dividing line here, up top, our change in uh, quantity supplied, down below our change in price. So we can do both of those. So up top to find our percentage change in quantity supplied, we have 126 divided by 147 gives us 0.86. 0.86 over, down below, we've got 50 divided by 100, which gives us 0.5, so you can see it there, 0.5. Now, when I go to put that together, what this says, it's the 0.5 is kind of confusing, obviously, it's 0.50, because we're looking at a percentage change. What it really says is that when the price changes, let me get here. When the price changes 50%, you will see a behavior change of producers at 86%. So think about that. If the price gets 50% higher, you will see a producer response at 86%. So at our 86 divided by 1.72, it seems high. Let's get red, 1.72, correct? Yes, 1.72. Go down here to interpret, 1.72. And I go, okay, well, my PES is not between zero and one. It is above one, but below infinity. So that means it is an elastic supply, which makes sense because it means that at a 50% price change, we saw an 86% response, which means the response is higher than the actual price. Okay. Um, da, 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 we can move on there. Now, for those of you curious, uh, if, if you are good to go, if you feel comfortable with that, I would go to cycle one assignments and I would work on midpoint calculations practice uh, and make sure you have that done before the end of the class period, because that is something that I very desperately need you to have done uh, before I see you either on Thursday or Friday. Um, for those of you who are math people, if you are very concerned as to why we use midpoint in uh, economics, just FYI, uh, this is why down here uh, we need to make sure that the change between the two, uh, two points we choose is uh, uh, similar. <clears throat> so you can read that at your leisure. But thank you for uh, checking this out. Uh, this will check uh, th this will check a lot of boxes. Man, I'm, this is just gets really, really bad toward the end, doesn't it? Sorry. Cycle one assignments, PED, PES, midpoint calculations, and follow the instructions. Thank you. Bye.